Hi, we're back, guys. We're talking a little bit about fraud, and I want to bring up a synopsis of some things that Mike talked about earlier today. One was about things you can do, antivirus, um, don't use a password, use a passphrase, uh, make it unique to you, uh, dual verification. Make sure you're doing those things first. You know, things, do the little things, and the little things will help uh, the title company or everyone else take care of the big things. Yeah, he suggested where you can't hit a driver, I believe. Now hey. you have to change your password. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You just out, that, was out there. that was an example. I don't want to lose a golfing buggy. I just want to make that clear. So, you know, you just mentioned that you had gotten a text message that had a link. Yes. And it's saying, you know, your card has been used. There's some kind of incentive to click this link. And clicking that link is how they catch you. You know, that's how they're able to get some information out of you is by clicking links. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important just to notice, too, that when you're getting an email, if there's anything suspicious about it, you want to be paying attention and don't just click a link just because it's there. You know, you have to be really cautious clicking those links. And I actually had an email that was a like a spoofed email. It was trying to mimic um, something that was real. And in the inbox, I could see a little bit of the words in kind of the preview of the text. It showed a link that was a, it was not an accurate link. It's not who mm -hmm. it should have been coming from. Okay. And so paying attention to those little things, that's a huge red flag. That tells you right there that's spam. Hey, so, Mike, can, can our clients come in and just wire when they're sitting down at the table with an escrow officer? And it kind of depends maybe on the bank. Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends on... Um, Technically, yes, you can, and it, it just depends on on how you have your banking set up and the mm -hmm. limits that you have. Um, I would suggest that if, if you're gonna, you would not do that. That you try to have that done, uh, set up and, and verified beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but sometimes you know folks come in and and especially if it's a buyer, uh, they'll sign beforehand um, right. because you know we the deal is not consummated until it. it it goes to the county recorder um but at that point you we can sit there and we can verify you know here's the verified wiring instructions now you can take that to your bank or you can do that from home but here's your verified wiring instructions and that's that's something that that we're uh, that we are happy to do at the closing table i'm i still like cashier's checks i, mean, I do too I, I tell my clients just don't wire please I, I i sleep better at night if you promise me you will not wire funds <laughs> so <laughs> you know it, understood, it, understood. It, but it's but it's there but it's it's everybody's comfort level right. convenience level and um you know sometimes i don't it, you know the banks will charge a ten dollar charge for a mm -hmm. for a cashier's check but if you're looking at ten dollars and versus uh couple hundred thousand dollars that you're that you're using for the transaction yeah. or you know tens of thousands of dollars it's it's a it's a pretty good it's a pretty good insurance yeah to making sure making sure that it's that it's going to the right place and and that's like and it's the same thing like um you know when when we're with when we're dealing with land land is the big is the big um really uh it's the low hanging fruit yeah in it's, the a fraud, it's, it's a low, fraud world. low hanging fruit and it's you know you you figure that we're everybody's got it locked down um but no <laughs> mm. no and mm. it's in and it's not just vacant land you know we had somebody um in in a different market that was selling a a, a house and we got their we got their ident their identification came in and the id the ids are getting really good mm -hmm. um and so we had um uh, an associate with a uh, law enforcement background go over and knock on the next door neighbor's house and say, does this guy live here? And they're like, nope, that's not him. That's that. Those were you know, some, some of the steps that we, we took to, to, to make sure we're, we're doing all the right things. Yeah. I think face to face, especially in our changing world with all of the, we hear about all the benefits of AI and, and how good technology is getting, and there you can't replace face to face. Yeah, well, and and, and we've got some we've got some 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 tools that we that we're using now, some new technology um, that at least uh, you know tries to match up. Like if somebody's got an ID, we we have a program that you know they photograph their ID, they photograph their face, and we you know do you look like the ID? Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we that we look for is is where the um, where the the transmissions coming from where right. where, they, where where they're located their IP address and 
oh, hey, you're supposed to be in Wyoming, and now you're in uh, actually South Africa is is um, been like one of the places, and like, oh, right. no, you're not that person, or we ha- we have reason to believe you're not that person. So, um, yeah, it's it's just it's just really, uh, you know, um, a situation where you want to look at how you can protect yourself, and so. As what we do as a as a as a title and escrow companies, we're two parts. So the escrow side is we're disinterested, disinterested third party that handles all the instructions that we're given. And we thank you for that. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our, we have we have people we really really like, but at the end of, when during the transaction, we're disinterested. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to follow the instructions. And then there's the other side where we're we're actually you know the 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 seller and buyer are are, are, are purchasing title insurance. And that's and that's an insurance policy that's protecting their interest and usage in that in that property. And what's interesting about t- about title insurance, unlike other insurance policies where it protects you going forward, title insurance protects you from when you when you acquire the property to going back. Mm-hmm. And depending on the type of policy and the um, the um, AAR, AAR uh, contract calls for the. Uh, Alta extended homeowners policy mm-hmm. um, on a residential uh, purchase, and that has that has a that has a ton of of coverage that goes in that that protects the 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 buyer um, for things that happened with the property in the past that the seller even didn't know about wasn't discovered. Um, one one it, one that it that it protects against is forgeries. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other, but the other thing is, is if there's encroachments or or, or or easements that 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 should have been disclosed, so you know how to use that property, you know where things are located. That if if they're not on your on your title commitment, and then your subsequent policy, if you build a pool, and then there's an easement recorded. Now you may have had the the, the utility company company out, and there's nothing there. But there's an easement, like the west 50 feet of this lot is for ingress, egress for um, you know, Tucson Electric Power, and you've built this pool, and and it wasn't disclosed to you, but it's of, of record. Well, we help, we come in and, 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 and ensure that for the damages on that property. If, if you bought a house and subsequently the neighbor comes to you and says, hey, you know, you're encroaching on my on my on my um, into my yard Mm -hmm. you need to move this wall do you need to we need to do something to your house that's covered um in a title in a title insurance policy so you know there's and then and then there's you know there's a process of verifying if it's an it's an actual claim and there's that there's there's losses incurred but that's like with any insurance policy uh but what it really does is it is it it does you know, give you some some financial relief, the great deal of financial relief, and depending on the case, that you're um, that you're you're you you can use the property as you need to use it, and if something changes, that you that you that you have a backstop. And I've seen it. I've I've seen cases where there's there's been a new home built. But it was built on the wrong piece of land, <clears throat> and it was it was oh, you know, it was insured. <laughs> And so the we got it, it. It was it was fixed, but that the person who put who spent the money to have have it built had a three hundred thousand dollar investment that they're looking at. Okay, well now we're protected. Good good deal. Yeah, yeah you're listening to the Pima County Manager VP of Pioneer Title. That's Mike Dawson. We'll talk. We can be back here. We'll be on the other. I want to see on the other side. I know Danielle's going to hit me on that. <laughs> after, after these messages, we'll be back to talk more with Mike Dalton. <laughs> 